Hi, welcome to the WLW podcast. Ah, uh, well, so WLW stands for Women Love Women. This podcast is obviously has nothing to do with any sports. If you guys are wondering what is this, and this is where I will analyze poems, song lyrics, and scripts, where you can see there are subtexts that could mean anything, anything but straight. So I love to read, or sometimes um you know I look into song lyrics by certain artists, but I will be like, mm, did I hear that correctly? Or did she just say or refer to that person as she? So or sometimes like, mm, is she talking about one thing to marry or take this girl out or this guy out? So which is it? So why I decided to do this? Okay, frankly, I enjoyed going into this rabbit hole of analyzing and interpreting body language, eye contact, and all those you know subtle touches. So I am thinking, why not share it with people who are also interested to listen to my analysis? Probably you guys do also experience this kind of situation before, and I, I and I could at least go in depth with it. So all right, so basically. What I would like to do is to start a few of these episodes with the poems that I have published in a book. Then, I will gradually add in new analysis from the collection of poems, song lyrics, and scripts. And just a disclaimer alert. So, my analysis, analysis will be just for entertainment and to see whether it makes sense. So, let us have fun. Okay. This podcast is brought to you by Winter Scribbler Publishing, where reality and imagination turn into delicate harmony of scripts and illustrations. Okay, in this episode, I will read a poem from one of my published book called Masterpiece in Your Heart. Okay, if you're looking for this book, look for the second edition. All right, and this series of prose poetry is expressed in a timeline from the beginning when it all started. So how some feelings can be so clear, yet the only solution I can think of is getting away from it. I have chosen to start with a poem which was written on the 20th of March 2014, which is called Those Times Untold. The first time I met you, I avoided looking into your eyes. Unexpectedly, part of my heart was hooked. The second time, I consciously told myself not to again, avoiding the attraction you emitted, avoiding myself through the same old thing repeatedly that will end up in disappointment. This time, we had the ample time to talk, share. I swiftly opened the door for you, but you insisted I go ahead. During that time, I simply thought it was nothing. So this moment, I am so glad you did that as I felt the only exception, though that gesture might be normal for you, your look of hope, probably, that I should join in the dinner, and that unexpected touch of your hand with mine before we parted ways. That the time we met, I was looking forward to it. I did not expect that I would have the chance to sit beside you, let alone chat, and be your partner. I accepted the cake you offered, though I was not really into it. You offered the door, you made me felt different that day, just you talking to me. Your smile and the way you speak brightens my day. That special night, I remembered how flush I felt, hopefully not that blatant. That unexpected hug made my night. As of recent, I could not stop myself from looking at the photos of us, taken candidly, molding comfortably. Us, spaces away from the others, at every scenes. That short glances between us, was overwhelming that I will never understand. Those times and moments, you seem to be closer to me, you and that person in many instances, just you and me, just the three of us. Seems intentional, right? Or probably just my usual imagination. His and your intelligence are a charm. The last time we met, you were as appealing as you ever were. That final touch, strong and natural, brightens my day. I know once again, it will just be this this untold and unspoken attraction that will last as it is. Alright, we have heard many times eyes are the window to our soul. That means when we are happy, angry, excited or sad, it will be visible to others. But it also depends if the other person is close to us enough in some way that could feel because sometimes one couldn't, you know? 
um, I'm the type of person who will normally make sure I make eye contact with the other person I am talking to. When someone else does that to me, it means a lot. So it will be like the other person is allowing me to walk with them on this route to how they think and feel. And when it comes to someone whom we are into, it could also mean to fall deeper to that rabbit hole with them. That is why sometimes if I'm worried that I will fall in love with this very gorgeous person, I will try to divert my eyes away from them. Mm, and have you tried using a magic eye contact when you are flirting? If yes, you have a, you have done it before. So how does it work for you? Alright, you see, I kind of believe that it is fun to try this and it actually works most of the time. So sometimes, doesn't matter whether the girl is straight or not, it will work. There will be at least I can see, you know, like the slightest response to it, like a smile, you know, or returning that same look again. So... Um, there was one time at a restaurant, so genuinely I was splitting with this girl who was serving me and my friend. So at the end of the night, when I went to make payment, she insisted her colleague that she would like to handle mine. Even though her colleague was like, it's, it's okay, he will do it, you know, that kind of uh, response to her. But the girl insisted and she did end up managing my bill behind the counter. So I honestly... Personally, I enjoyed this flirting technique, which is the subtle version, not the type where I will go to a person's table and say, hi, can I buy you a drink? You know, I will not do that kind of stuff. I mean, at the moment, I won't. I haven't tried it, see, but I will try probably. <laughs> so, and I love to see the outcome of, outcome of it. To what extent my capabilities and my guessing are accurate? So sometimes whether the person will be interested in me, or is she gay, or what, or is she straight, but partly interested in women. So I try my best to find out whether it is. So that's one of the ways that uh, I will try to, um, you know, analyze a person. Um, have you heard the meme or joke about this in Tumblr or social media? Mm, how could actors not fall in love with their co-star in love scene when you will fall in love with someone or uh, or think about this stranger who opens the door for you like for uh for a moment but you can think about them like for more than six months so this is very funny so opening opening the door for someone is commonly especially if a person looks like he or she needs your help is common all right so this is like a sign of someone who is helpful and, you know, courteous. But on the other hand, have you ever done something like this with someone whom you know and secretly interested in? At times, I will be the one who will open the door for my friends or random strangers if I am there by the door. But if a guy opened the doors for me, like could be friends or strangers, it's like a very nice gesture, which is very good, but very gentlemanly. But... What about when a woman does that to me? So, does that to me or to you? Well, there is once in my lifetime, especially when that is complimented with that slight smile. You know, there is a certain smile, uh, a very special smile that you think it is only meant for you. And I have been thinking about it since then. So, um, this friend is actually a friend of one of my closest friends. So, on that day, I have been looking forward to talk to her all day. Then we had this opportunity to chat while walking towards the fast food restaurant. So like, you know, as natural as possible, I will open the door and I invited her to go in first. But like usual, <laughs> I will only do that when I am interested in someone or maybe like Sila depends. If for example, my friend is nice, I will do it anyway. So that is like the 101 guide to flirting. Doesn't matter whether you are straight or not. So by then, she insisted not to enter. So instead, she gestured to me to go ahead first while she holds the door. So, um, like, and she did it with, like, the shades of confidence. And then there is this damn eye contact, which I mentioned earlier. Like, um, you know, like, it's different from others. So, and like a normal human being, I melted. <laughs> Visit www.winterscribbler.com for collections of books, poetry, and graphics by diverse talents of artists and writers around the world. Games. I am normally so competitive that I want to win in games. So that is why sometimes I will sigh literally heavily when a group of friends decided to play games. Then I have to act as if I am calm because I want to win. <laughs> so as usual, coincidentally on that day, um, on this event, I was paired up, paired up with this same person. Alright, this friend who opened it up for me. It was such a love-wracking situation. 
um, not because I was competitive or wants to win during that moment. It's because this time we were brought together on the same team and it was a team of two. You see, of all people, of all people in that room, is that person you <laughs> you are very nervous with. <laughs> or anyway, um, I know I feel like a bit tense. So especially I've got to be like so close to her, you know, I can feel that. And when I'm tense, I will be like a rock. I will, uh, I think you can see that I am tense. So I mean, ladies, don't you all feel like that? I mean, you might have looked forward to meeting this person you miss so much. And then when you finally got to meet her, you will be like speechless. And it will be like a nerve-wracking situation, you know, that happens. And then you plus that you being uh, awkward and there will be this awkward interaction and energy surrounding you. So anything, like everything you plan before you meet her, it will be like very haywire in your brain cell. And then things like, should I smile? Should I laugh? Should I stand next to her? Or the should I, should I will be in your head, isn't it? Right. When I wrote this poem, I was like very detailed on the things that happened, just so it will remind me in the future that even the smallest kindness could make me happy. Um, that is why I even talk about the cake <laughs> in this poem. So every detail, every detail is is very important to me. So we all love cakes. I mean, most of us don't, don't we? So have you guys? I mean, have you guys like experienced a situation where you do not have an, any appetite, but then someone you are into give you a slice of something? So what did you do? So this happened when she gave me a slice of a pandan cake. If I remember correctly, it was like a pandan cake. So pandan cake is nice. I mean, like I love pandan cake, but that day I was like, has no appetite at all. Um, frankly, it's because she was right in front of me. <laughs> I always don't have the appetite when someone I have crush on is there with me. I don't know why. Anyway, I took it though. And I took the pandan cake and emptied my plate in more time. But it was like draggy. So as you can see that... um. You know, the slightest um, moment that you have at the moment when you are with that someone, it feels like, uh, how to say, whatever you plan sometimes doesn't work well. So you just have to let it go. Alright guys, so when we began this episode, I talk about how eye contact is a root to a person's heart. I would like to end it with the magnetic force of a smile. So since I was small, my mom reminded me to smile to people including those we do not know, you know, and not to look so serious all the time. I remember every time I look serious, she would tell me not to frown. And please look friendly, you know? <sighs> me? Well, maybe it started from when I was small then, so... Recently, I just realized about how a smile could have an impact to someone's life. So maybe our smile and our highs to a stranger or even to our neighbors could make a difference to them in some way. You know, like maybe our smile could lighten up someone's bad day, you know. Maybe our smile could make someone forget about how bad their day was at work. Maybe our random smile, you know, to a stranger could make her or his day better. So we don't, you know, you know. Then, when I grew up, I realized that smiling could also be used as a tool to flirt. So there is this specific type of smile that I think could melt any individual's heart. Uh, I mean, like, you use it wisely, right? Someone could do it for you, or you could do it to them. Um, but one thing I am sure is that one of the formulas to someone's heart and soul is through the specific type of smile that eye contact combines with the intention to flirt. And that could make yours and that person's day as beautiful as the blue sky. So try to smile, guys. To purchase a copy of the second edition of Masterpiece in Your Heart, visit Amazon.com or www.winterscribbler.com. For any feedbacks and questions, email us at winterscribbler at gmail.com. All right, babes. So if you have anything that you would like to share based on your experiences with women whom you were or are attracted to, please do send us an email. And if you don't mind me sharing to the listeners in our upcoming episodes or the next season, do note it in the email. So I would be happy to share. Thank you for listening and see you all soon.